Hey YouTube, welcome to this rainy day here at Rooted Oak Ranch. My name is Megan and today I'm going to be sharing with you guys one of my favorite ways to grow endless leafy greens year-round no matter where you live. Get yourself a bag of good potting soil. Step two, get a container. Try to find one that's about the same size as the bag you just bought. And you can do that by looking at the lid size. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this one. One thing that I did wanna mention that's kind of important is you're gonna wanna get a clear container. Um, and if you can't find clear, you're going to want a super light colored one. Step three, get your seeds. Okay, so we've got our soil, we've got our container with the lid, and we've got our seeds. Now, you're also wanna, gonna want to grab something to cut with, like a box cutter or some scissors, and something to poke with, like a screwdriver or a pencil, whatever because our next step is to prepare the bag. I'm gonna pick a side to be the bottom, doesn't matter, and we're gonna poke a bunch of holes in it for drainage. You want to be thorough, and you wanna make it even across the whole surface of the bottom so that you don't have any excess pulling inside the bag. Should be good. Okay, after you poke the holes, you flip the bag over onto the lid. And FYI, this is one cubic foot, and the container is, I think, fi yep, 55 liters, which is the perfect size if you needed a reference. All right, the next step is to cut a hole in the top of the bag. So you want to cut it close enough to the edge so that you can actually utilize all of the soil, but you don't want to cut it so close that the walls don't hold the soil. You want it to have some sort of structure. So, something like this. Alright, so something like that. Okay, step six, or whatever step we're on, the next step is you actually want to remove some of the soil because these bags they usually come compacted and once you start messing with the soil and it starts relaxing you'll probably lose some seedlings and we don't want that so i'm going to put some in here for this amazing rhubarb that my neighbor just brought over for me actually I like to just take some handfuls off the top here and you know this is like your best judgment every bag is going to be different but you just want there to be you just don't want it to be spilling out once it relaxes so now Next up is you're gonna wanna soak the soil. Make sure it's really wet. Um, I need to go get my watering can, so I will go do that and I'll be right back. I just went ahead and watered it. I forgot to turn the camera on, but you want your soil to be evenly wet and you want it to be wet, not just damp. So give it a good little soaking. Next step, sow the seeds. All right, so next, pick your seeds. I'm gonna do half lettuce, half spinach. First, I'm gonna do the lettuce. I just sprinkle them all over the top surface. Spinach. I'm doing lettuce and then like a row of spinach and then lettuce on the other side. 
gonna do a row. Maybe I'll do two. I'll do two rows of spinach. Okay. okay, once you got the lettuce seeds on there, you don't need to bury them deep. Just kind of go over it with your hands so that, <clears throat> you know, just like lightly rub the soil over them. So we got a little something, something over them. Loosely, bling bling, and then the next step is to cover it. Kind of massage it all up in there so that it fits in the container. And that's another reason you don't want to cut the walls too shallow. Okay, and I would go ahead and actually snap it in. And voila! And there you have it. Fully self-contained greenhouse. Essentially all you need is some um, sunlight and a spot big enough for this. The last step and the most important step, which is what makes it an endless harvest, is what I'm gonna go show you next in my container of lettuce that I already have grown. So I'm gonna find a good place for this, probably on the south side of my house, and I'll see you guys over there. Lettuce likes locations that get five to six hours of sunlight a day. They also prefer locations that get shade in the afternoon because lettuce likes to bolt if it's consistently 75 or higher. Um, but there are ways to minimize that. I live in a rainforest, so cloud cover is typical for me, but I, this is also the south side of my house and there are no trees over there. So in the dead of summer, I am gonna need to protect these from the direct sunlight. Planning on doing is putting some taller vegetables around this. Until I get my garden space set up, I'm basically gonna be working out of mini greenhouses and makeshift raised beds that I make either out of wood pallets or these um, until, like I said, I get the garden space going because I'm going to be doing in-ground sewing as well. <laughs> so lots of plans. But back to the lettuce. But the reason this works all year round is because you can kind of cater to the elements. Um, so if you know it's gonna be a really cold night, you can take some straw or hay or whatever organic material you got and bunch it up around the bottom of the, the base here. And what that does is it keeps the moisture in. Um, same goes if you know it's gonna be super hot. Um, you can shade it and then insulate the moisture to keep the soil wet so the roots stay cooler do know it's going to be a super hot day you are going to want to prop this open and let it breathe okay so once you have waited for i don't know what lettuce seeds germinate seven to ten days then give them a couple more weeks after that you'll have some baby greens if you want to harvest them then so this method that i'm showing you works for leaf harvesting not head harvesting. If you want to harvest an entire head, it won't keep producing. You can do that this way. You can still do that this way, but you would have to go through and thin it out a lot. So this is what it looks like after it's had a chance to grow. And <laughs> my dogs think I'm talking to people. So they're barking. So 
the trick to getting it, the leaves to keep coming back is the way you cut it. Now, at the base of it, at the base of the head is the crown. You don't want to damage the crown. You want to cut about two inches up from the crown and then it'll keep producing from that point. Now, if you want a big head like this baby I've got right here, then you just need to thin around it so that it has room, has enough light and enough space for the leaves to get big. You wanna make sure that your scissors or your knife, whatever you're using, is extremely sharp. Otherwise, you risk smushing and damaging the plant. You wanna actually slice right through that baby. When you do it that way, you leave the crown and it'll keep producing leaves out of that point. I'm, just gonna, I'm actually just going to harvest a bunch of this because I'm having a big salad for dinner. And there you have it. Don't damage the crown. It'll keep coming back. Well, I'm gonna go eat my salad. Thanks for hanging out with me today, you guys. I hope you learned something. Till next time, see you in the garden.